Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, welcome to today's session. I'm Francisco, and today we are going to be looking at Grenache in the Southern Rome. Okay? Now, before we move forward to our session, it's important for us to understand the learning outcomes and the assessment criteria for this session in particular. We need to be able to understand how environmental free influences, grape growing options, and wine making options impact the style and quality of wines made from Grenache in the southern France. Apart from that, and the assessment criteria, by the end of the session, you should be able to describe the characteristics of Grenache grape variety, describe how environmental influences, grape growing, and wine making options impact Grenache in the southern France region. Apart from that, describe the styles and quality of wines from Grenache from specified GIs in southern France. And the last but not the least, describe and compare the styles and quality of Grenache wines labeled Cote de Rhone, Cote de Rhone Village, and also Chateau Neuf du Pape. Beautiful. Now, before we move forward with our session, it's important for us to refresh and bring back some information from previous sessions that would allow us to uh, bring context to today's uh, topic. So, let's start with a few questions. Javier, tell me, what will be the effect on grapes' acidity when growing at a warm climate? Mm, I would say the acidity drops. Absolutely right. The warmer it gets, the acidity will be dropping more and more. So, next question for Ricardo. What are the effects of stones on surfaces of soils towards grape ripening? Stones will absorb the heat from the sun and make the vineyard warmer, allowing, allowing more ripening to the grape. Absolutely right. So these little pebbles are actually able to gather the heat from the sun and then reflect it to the vineyards later on. Very well done. Now, Simone, tell me, what are some of the reasons between or behind the blending of wines? Well, to create wines that are more complex or to generate consistency, consistency sorry, uh, from one year to the next year. Absolutely right. So to add flavors or to add extra characteristics or component to single variety ones, but also to generate consistency from year to another. For example, in Champagne, we do see that happening a little bit. Perfect. Now let's move back to Javier. Tell us what happens to climate as we go south in the northern hemisphere. It should get warmer. Absolutely. So the closer we get to the equator, the warmer it would actually get. Next question for Ricardo. Tell me, what are two of the most common methods to make dry rosé wines? Short maceration and blending. Absolutely right. Very well done. And Simone, just one more question for you. Tell me, what happens to grapes when the yields are way too high? So the flavor of the grapes will be diluted and obviously the level of sugar will be low. Absolutely. Perfect. Very well done, guys. Now, let's move forward to a little bit of information about Grenache as a grape variety itself. So first of all, it's important to understand that Grenache is a black grape variety that needs warm climate to be able to ripen successfully. In addition to that, Grenache has thin skin, but also low to medium tannin, low acidity, and tends to have high sugar levels as well. We are able to see red fruit characteristics like strawberry and plum, but also we are able to see flavors of spice like white pepper and even some licorice being present right there. Now, it is also important to mention that the yields of Grenache need to be carefully taken care of in order to bring enough quality and concentration to the wine itself. So Ricardo, with that information, tell me, what kind of yields do you think that winemakers should be considering in order to retain high uh, alcohol and high levels of sugar in Grenache? Low yields. Absolutely. They're right. We need to be looking at the low yields when we are managing the vineyards in order to create this uh, good concentration of flavors as well. Because of the red fruits that Grenache tends to have, we also need to, and we also see it as well as a, a rose wines with the short maceration method. And these ones can actually be anywhere from dry to medium sweet. So, Ricardo, what characteristics do you think that this kind of rose wines will be delivering? To the, to the well tasting it. We can expect them to be very fruity and to be consumed young. Absolutely right. So they tend to be this fresh, light, luscious kind of uh, rosé wines as well. Now, I want to bring back a little bit of information regarding Syrah grapes, as um, this is going to allow us also to understand how Syrah and Grenache and what are the effects when we blend Syrah 
And Bernard says, this is actually a very common practice. Now tell me, um, Ricardo, what would be the color and thickness of Syrah grapes? Syrah is a black grape variety with thick skin. Okay, and tell me a little, about, a little bit about the climate in which Syrah can actually grow. Uh, mostly moderate to warm climate. Absolutely. Uh, so in moderate climate, what do we expect from Syrah? Uh, medium to full body, fresh black fruit flavors with herbaceous notes and black peppers aroma. Absolutely, very well done. And tell me what happens with the same grape variety when we look at it in a warmer climate context. Uh, fuller body, higher alcohol content, with riper flavor fruit profile and uh, mostly cooked black fruit and licorice in this case. Uh, some part of, of the world, like Australia, for example, call it Shiraz. Absolutely correct. Very, very good information, Brother Ricardo. Thank you very much for that. And yes, the, the reason why I'm bringing Syrah right here is because Syrah is often blended with Grenache in order to add all these complexity of flavors that Ricardo has just mentioned. So, Javier, tell me, what will Syrah add to Grenache when blended? Give us a bit more information regarding that topic. Syrah will add, I think, some more color, acidity, more tannin, and that would make the wine more complex. Absolutely right. Very well done. Now, in addition to that, it's very important to mention that some producers tend to use a little bit more this all oak when it comes to Grenache um, in this specific part of the world. So, Javier, tell me, what would be the effect of that in Grenache wines? I think uh, using all oak uh, allows the wine to showcase uh, natural red fruit flavors. That's right. Uh, because if we go with obviously new oak, we're going to be pretty much overpowering all these red, beautiful, fresh fruits that we're going to have. And we're going to be overpowering that with a lot of these spice or vanilla kind of flavors or uh, clove or cinnamon that we don't want to be obviously doing. We want to be able to just really let the Grenache to uh, showcase its amazing red fruit flavors, okay? Now, last but not least, and to finish up right here with these slide, folks, it's important to mention that good Grenache dominated wines tend to be uh, simple with red fruit and spice. Depending on the areas where the Grenache is actually grown, we can see different complexities of flavor, okay? So remember that this is related to the climate itself. The very good and outstanding examples are full bodied with high concentration. We also see high alcohol and they have very good potential for aging. This process can actually generate flavors of dry fruit and even caramel after the aging has happened. Fantastic, very well done guys. Now, let's move forward to a little map right here as well for us to have a better perspective of what's going on um, with the region that we're looking at. So first of all, it's important to understand the, uh, and identify what the southern uh, Rhone region in France is, which is obviously located in the southeast of France. And Grenache is the most important grape variety of that region, okay? This is also to make red and rosy wines, as previously mentioned. In addition to that, it is important to mention that one of the more, most important regions for rosé, which are, is located right here also in southern France, is going to be Minervois AOC, which is located on the southwest of the southern Rhone. Okay, so Simone, just to bring back the memories, tell me what would be the most important grape variety of that region? Obviously, the Grenache. That's right. Um, tell me, are we expecting Grenache to ripen here well, and why do you think it will ripen here well? It will ripen here well uh, because of Minervois uh, warm climate. That's right. So Minerva obviously being so sad, remember, as we mentioned before, the sadder we get, the warmer it gets. Minerva being very much south of the southern Rhone region and it gets quite warm. Perfect, perfect for Grenache itself. So Simone, tell me, what would Grenache add to blends with local varieties, like for example, Syrah in this area in particular? Well, red fruit flavors yes. and definitely body. Absolutely. So we do tend to see a lot more like a complexity of red fruit flavors happening right there when blended, for example, like Syrah, as we said, Syrah very versatile in the places that we can actually go. Fantastic, very, very well done. Now, let's talk about climate, guys. We have obviously briefly spoken about it, but very important to bring that back and just specifically focus on that. Now, the climate in the Southern Rhone is gonna be warm, right? Now, let's compare what happens in terms of climate between the Northern and the Southern Rhone. So, Javier, why is the climate warmer in the southern Rhone than in the northern Rhone to start with? Because of the southern latitude. Absolutely. Remember, southern latitude closer to the equator. In addition to that, what is the climate in the northern Rhone and the influences of aspect in this area? 
So let's reflect back to the Northern Rome and tell us a little bit about what happens and what are the influences of climate in the Northern Rome. Uh, modern climate, uh, aspect to the south, uh, to, in addition to the sunlight reflection uh, from the river, it's the ripening. The ripening, absolutely. So we do see a moderate climate, a little bit cooler than the southern Rhone, but what they do in order to get ripening, it's obviously the aspect to the southern parts of the vineyards facing the south to get more sunlight exposure, but also the river Rhone reflecting all these uh, reflection from the sun in order to aid with the ripening as well. In addition to that, Francisco, uh, Javier, what happens to the geographical characteristics in the southern Rome? The valley flattens out mm -hmm. and uh, we see less uh, slopes. Absolutely, so we do have a little bit more flatness, I would say, in the southern Rome as well. So, just to finish up with the northern Rome, uh, Javier, tell me, what is the only black grape variety allowed in the northern Rome? Should be Syrah. Syrah, absolutely right. Now, let's uh, change things a little bit up um, for Simone. So tell me, uh, what is the main grape, uh, black grape variety in the southern row now, Simone, which is something that obviously it's the main topic, but there's a very important component right here that will determine why that grape variety is the main one in the southern row. So tell us, Simone. So obviously it's the Grenache. Yes. Because the, the grape is a, a able successfully to ripen uh, to the warm climate. Mm -hmm. And it's, all, it's actually also one of the requirements to, uh, for this grape to fully ripen. In, uh, in addition to that, in some areas, pebbles um, in the soil can uh, aid with uh, head, with the reflection, sorry, to, of head to the winners and help the ripeness. Absolutely. So as we see right here, guys, these are the little pebbles that allow this ripening happening in southern Rome but also to aid Grenache. So Grenache, as we said, is the main grape variety in the Southern Rhone, and Syrah would be the one in the Northern Rhone. Very, very well done, guys. Now, let's move forward to our next slides right here, where we're gonna be talking about labelings and what is actually happening with the labelings in, labeling in this region. Although the region is divided in two different regions, so the Northern and the Southern Rhone, they have the same uh, hierarchy in terms of labeling across the whole Rhone Valley, okay? Regarding the label using the Rhone Valley, we can identify the following three. So first of all, let's have a look at Côte du Rhône. It's the broadest regional appellation in the Rhone Valley. It is almost exclusively made out of grapes from the Southern Rhone itself. So Ricardo, remind us what is that grape variety? Grenache. Perfect, that is correct. These are ones that are usually just quite simple, medium body ones, and they're actually meant to be consumed without any aging. So pretty much very easy and consumable ones straight away. Let's move to the second label in right here, which is going to be Côte du Rhône Village. Coming also uh, from southern, um, from a number of southern Rhône villages, these ones offer more intensity, a little bit more complexity. Um, they're also Grenache. So how can we achieve this, Ricardo? How are we getting ones from the same grape variety, but that can be a little bit more complex than the previous Côte du Rhône? With your control. Absolutely. So these winemakers here are obviously putting a little bit more effort into the yield control, and that's how we're getting much more complex wines. Now, let's talk about the last one, which is gonna be the Rhone Cruz. For this purpose of this topic, we're gonna be looking at Chateauneuf du Pape, which offers outstanding complexity on concentrations. These ones are predominantly made out of Grenache, but they are also able to be blends. Ricardo, considering the concentration of these wines, do you think that they are suitable for aging? Definitely, yes. And what do you think that are some of the flavors that we can actually find from bottled aging? Uh, caramel and dried fruit. Yes, very well done. Fantastic, guys. Very, very good. Now, we have looked at our um, theory for today. So now time for a few questions to make sure that we have understood what we have delivered today. Let's just start with Simona right here. Where is the southern Rome located? Uh, southern is France. That's correct, in southern East France. So Simone, let's continue with yourself. Tell me, what is going to be the climate in the southern Rome? Warm. Very good, dude. very, very uh, well done right there, Simone. And let's move forward to our next question. What is the main grape used to blend with Grenache in Minervois? Syrah. Syrah, very good, fantastic. Now, uh, let's uh, get uh, Javier to help us a little bit with this question right here, okay? 
we're going to be describing the characteristics of these two following labels. So we obviously have Côte du Rhône and also the Chateauneuf du Pape that we saw on the previous slide. Let's start with um, some areas right here, which I'm going to be asking you. For example, Javier, tell me, what is going to be the main bread variety for Côte du Rhône? Côte du Rhône should be Grenache. Fantastic. And what about for Chateauneuf du Pape? Grenache, but it's also uh, one. Absolutely. Very well done. Tell us a little bit about the body of these wines. Côte du Rhône. What would be the body of Côte du Rhône? Should be medium body. Medium body. Fantastic. And what about Chateauneuf du Pape? Chateauneuf du Pape should be full body. Perfect. Now, let's look at flavor characteristics of these wines. So what about for Côte du Rhône? Côte du Rhône should be, they should be simple, red fruit and spice. Perfect. And Chateauneuf du Pape, uh, more like a high concentration, high alcohol uh, and dry fruits. Very, very well done. And let's just finalize with one last question. Which one do you think is more suitable for aging? Côte du Rhône or Chateauneuf du Pape? Uh, probably shut in the box. Absolutely, more concentration, more alcohol, and definitely very, very suitable for aging. Fantastic, guys. Thank you very much for today. It was a pleasure, and we'll see you on the next session. Thank you very much. Yeah.